Good afternoon and welcome to Town Meeting Television. Here we are with Mac McDonald, my good friend and resident expert on pretty much any topic. <laughs> and we are so glad you're here, Mac. Nice to see you. It's nice to be back, uh, Lauren Klein. I really miss Channel 17. We, you know, it's been like a lot of other things over the last couple of years. You know, I've missed a lot. And I've let, listed, you know, I've missed baseball as well. I mean, we had last year was our first season back and the Lake Monster started uh, last night was opening night. It was opening night, which is why we have hats, which <laughs> is why I'm covering my fabulous hair just for in the honor of the occasion. <laughs> so I know that you have been deeply involved with baseball in Burlington for years and years. Yeah. And um, before we start about the new season, just tell me a little bit about how you got involved in baseball in Burlington. Okay, this is back in the 80s. People might remember the um, Vermont Reds and the Vermont Mariners. And my kids who are in their 40s right now wanted to go to the baseball games a lot. And uh, I um, decided they, they needed help, so I, I decided to uh, help out. And um, the Reds probably fielded one of the greatest teams in baseball. They put a team on the field, uh, I believe it was in 1991, that all players were from Vermont, were from Burlington, came through, all, everybody on the roster came through Burlington, and they won the World Series that year. Now, in 1988, it was four years we had the Reds, and 1988, uh, we had the uh, Mariners. Uh, this was a double A ball. This is high level, about as high as you can go. Um, and uh, Ken Griffey Jr. Um, played for our team that year. Again, we, we were in the finals, and I believe we lost that year, I'm not sure. Anyway, we were in the finals. So all five years that we had the double A clubs, we were in the finals of the Eastern League. We set the record at that time for the Eastern League as far as uh, number of wins and all this type of thing. Uh, it, was, it was an exciting time, yeah. So not only were you involved by bringing your kids to the park, but yeah. you also were kind of a scout, yeah. right, well, talent spotter. Um, when the Montreal, when uh, in 90, whatever that was, uh, I forget the year, um, when Montreal came to town, uh, the uh, pitching coach was Butch uh, he, uh, Hughes, and uh, Butch asked, he says, can you help us out? We, can, we need somebody to do the filming. And my buddy had a, a camera and stuff, and we said, yeah, we can, we can help you out. And uh, the best advice I ever heard from anybody um, was uh, Galen Carr, who has lived in Burlington as a Vermonter, and uh, he's with the Los Angeles Dodgers now, and I believe he has four World Series rings. I'm not sure exactly, but I mean, he has a lot. And um, he said, when somebody asks you to help them, you say, yep, <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> Whatever the contract is. and. Uh, I was then uh, offered a job, and uh, we were under contract for 17 years uh, with the Montreal Expos, MLB Expos, um, Washington Nationals for a few years, um, those, those teams. And so what did you do? You had the camera. What had the were videography. You uh, yeah. Well, I was doing the... Um, Pitchers and the hitters, and they may also have a assignment. They want to take somebody, say the second baseman, focus on the second baseman for say like the third inning or something like that. There, you know, other things like that. Um, and but you always every day you started with the starting pitcher. You started from the front, and then you wait to get the uh, open side, uh, and then they'd have uh, four hitters. Um, you'd pick out the four, you know, whichever one you figured you hadn't shot that much. And, uh, or else, you know, there were just assignments sometime. And, and then after a while, they get confidence, you know, 
And so after the first year, um, they told us that it would be a couple of weeks. And the front office made blah, blah, blah. They might get a guy and stuff. And this is when it was in Montreal, so it wasn't too bad. You know, it's a little over an hour's drive. So you and, would record them so that the coaches could look right. at how they were performing? You, exactly. Yeah. And uh, other, the other elements as things went on. Now, in the beginning, it was obviously kind of rudimentary. I mean, we were using uh, our own camera, basically. VHS cameras, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, the so, tape. Yeah. Two hour a, tape, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of them in no, the yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway. Um, yeah, so that's how I got it. You know, it's a, did you develop your own ability to look at them? Or no, they, yeah, after a while, that, that's where it becomes confident. Like, uh, they ask opinion. And when they start doing that, you know, you're kind of like being in the mob, you know. It's hard <laughs> you're, to get in. Out. you're in it, you're in it. Yeah. And so, uh, actually, the only thing I think was, well, whatever. Um, so let me ask yeah. you about um, opening day. So yeah. who, I, this is, I mean, I have the hat, but yeah. who's playing? Who are the Lake okay. Monsters? The Lake Monsters are a team, Montreal, as you remember, uh, moved from uh, Montreal to Washington, D.C. Uh, so we had to come up with another name, and Lake Monsters is the one that was chosen by the people, the fans, basically. And... Uh, the affiliation, now, the, okay, the Major League part, Major League was developed, I'm not gonna go into this, it takes really too long to go through it, um, but minor league clubs have affiliations with a Major League club, and our affiliation was Montreal Expos, and then uh, Montreal moved to Washington, D.C., became the Washington Nationals, and then the affiliation with the Washington National lasted, I think it was about four or five years, and uh, it switched to the A's. And I was with the A's, I think it was a year or two. I was getting old. Uh, I wasn't able to really um, do the jumping around, like yeah. doing, you know, and, the, and actually the stadium, had been, this is 2012, the stadium had been rehabbed. They put new chair, new seats, and the size was, I couldn't jump over them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sure so, sign. So yeah, it was a sign of senescence. Yeah. So um, then I just um, I told him I couldn't. You know, my ankle was giving me trouble, yeah. and uh, it's called age. <laughs> it's like a lot of the guys. You know, it's the way it is. You get to that point. You know. Yeah. And so uh, I do other things now. They offered um, um, forget who the guy was, a player development. Anyway, I said, we, well, we can, you, your eyeballs are okay, right? Yeah, my eyeballs are good, you know, and this and that. Other body parts, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> we need you just to spot, you know, to um, see what's going on, you know. Mm -hmm. And so they uh, that worked out. And they also went, oh, yeah, this is when the uh, uh, A's came on. They had a, a camera system that w was amazing, is amazing. It gets all the angles, mm -hmm. and it takes the important part, like the thing that I always wanted to see was uh, velocity, yeah. in and out, and uh, you know, other, a lot of other elements to the game. And with this computer system, they were able to hook it up pretty good. I mean, Centennial Field, look, when they were doing it, I couldn't, yeah, oh my God. So what do you look for? When you're spotting, what are you looking for in you, a player? Okay, or when, a pitcher, for example. yeah, uh, okay. You're, you're looking, first off, the feet or the mounds. You have to have them problems with the mound. Some, a lot of times that happens. Um, you're also looking, you want to get the overall, where the ball goes when it's hit, you know, this kind of thing. Um, you, when we first started, we got the renter going through first, going for the duration. And for some reason, they got rid of that. They, uh, there was another element there that we used. I can't remember. I can't get older. <laughs> but when you look at a player, what do yeah. you look? What do you look? What are your eyeballs you, looking for? Uh, the, first off, you're basically taking the open side uh, or behind the sometimes sometimes behind the catcher, but the open side, lefty or righty. Uh, 
And if they switch hit, that's another problem. But because you got to run from one part of the stadium to the other, I mean, you know, it's almost a, I, I was able to do it. I thought that was a little proud, but you know, with a big crowd there, you're not going to do it. So that's when they, you have a switch hitter comes in. That's uh, you try and figure out what side you really, really, you know, want to get. And it depends on, you know. Uh, so are you looking for where the ball's placed by the yeah, pitcher? Yeah, that's is another that that's another point? element. That's a, another element. There's a whole bunch of elements here that are going on. Um, you know, I covered the, the f foot landing, the landing part, um, and the other. There's there's several elements so you're looking for. There are ways that you could improve a yeah, well, that's performance it. Yeah, by that's a whole, feet position. Right, right. Direction right. of the ball, yep. improving the velocity of the, with with which it's thrown, right. things like that. Yep. So now there's a new there's a starting pitcher on the Lake Monsters. Yeah. Right. Tell me about him. Tell me about last night. It must. Yeah. Be okay. Last night was interesting. Uh, the, again, continuing to start at Lake Monsters and what the affiliations are and everything else, um, and and the ownership. Ray Picor is the one that. Did, did the work, you know, Ray Picor, Tom Racine, and a bunch of other guys. And uh, we got the Expos because close by, you yeah. know. And uh, so the GM, uh, Kyle, uh, was a GM for a long time. CJ's back with us again. He went to, he spent some time down in Norwich, uh, Connecticut. And um, so the, uh, Affiliation was with the Expos and Nationals, so that was pretty steady through there. And then uh, we got the A's, which was the A's were funny because they had a they have a Vermont connection, um, and it goes back you know thousand years. I don't know, it goes back a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, you know we were in Philadelphia. We had a minor league club here at one time that was affiliated in 1954, and they started out as a Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, and then they moved to uh, Kansas City, <laughs> and so they they uh, ended up they they had they were the Athletics and they were in uh, the um, Provincial League. It was called it was this Class C uh, league, and it was mostly Montreal teams around the border. You know, Saint yeah. Jean, Quebec, and yeah. um, Tiffer Mines, and a whole bunch of other places that have a history of Eastern League ball, and. Uh, have you know, quite a bit of history. As a matter of fact, they have a, a league uh, similar to Futures League in the sense that it's college kids, and it's just the border of the border. Wow. It runs right along the U.S. border. Right. Coaticook, St. John, St. Richelieu, uh, Tefford Mines, a whole bunch of other towns right along there. A town that's always had a team is Actonville. And I it went so far as to take a trip there one day, look the place over, yeah. and they have a mound that the, the field conditions are really, really, really good. So and would you see the kids playing high school in these? Yeah. This, these are high school ball. Yeah. That on um, okay, and then, so the A's, the Lake Monsters are an A's. Uh, yeah, they're uh, well, no, they're not affiliated now. Okay. They're the league is a collegiate. Uh, a summer league, what they okay. call it, the Collegiate Summer League. They're like the uh, New England Collegiate League, uh, which plays in Montpelier, plays in White River Junction, okay. um, and they have the same rules as as the sum Collegiate Summer Leagues. Now, the Futures League is a little bit different than others in the sense that it emphasizes it has a certain number of players that are either, well, that are New England-centric. In other words, either live here, born here, or have other connections, go to school. Got it. Um, Middlebury College has, you know, had some players come They've through that are really players, good. Yeah. yeah. So so it's not a double-A team anymore? It's no, it's not affiliated. Got it. And the thing is, the affiliation changed um, two years ago, mm -hmm. so it's all in a state of flux right now. A lot Got of it. the, as a matter of fact, I had pretty good discussion with one of my buddies last night uh, about the current situation. And uh, we've only seen one game, so I can't really. Well, tell me about the game. Tell me about yeah. coming into the stadium and having the ballpark and it really how to feel. Really fantastic shape. Yeah. And, and, you know, the front office, we're, we're very fortunate. The front office is very 
probably one of the best in the business, in, in my opinion. Okay, I'm slanted, you know. But uh, when you look at other operations, now the other one, Montpelier is really great. Mm -hmm. They do a nice job there. I haven't been, I've been by the Hartford field, uh, but I haven't seen any games there, White River. They have a new stadium there. They yeah. built it for this team, a farmer decided to retire and take his social security and dump that into a, a, a complex actually down there. So I mean, this Field is- of dreams. Yeah, you got it. How great. <laughs> yeah, this is, a, we got stories around Vermont like that. I mean, I could go on for days, but yeah, well, that's last it. Last night, you get so, to the Okay, field. yeah, we get to the field. It's raining. It's maybe snowing, not sure. It's coming <laughs> in your face, you know, it's like, and you know, all the guys are there, the, the people, the folks that you see, and you, you wait in line. This is the thing about the job when I had the filming as opposed to being just a fan. Um, I'd get there quite a bit early, like if they had special projects they wanted to do. And, uh, you know, like the uh, player development guy comes in, you know, anyway, you get to know them real good. And that's actually your go-between and your pitching coach, your pitching coach, your pitching coach. And um, a lot of times what you'll do, the other thing too, is a lot of times they'll ask you questions about well, who do you think we ought to see tonight or whatever. Manager will want to say something. You know, let's let's get Charlie in or, you know, he had a bad outing last time or see what it, you know. Um, so that's, it's great in my opinion. It must have been fun. So you get in the stands and the game starts, and yeah. what are the highlights of last night's game? Um, last night, the interesting part is, I don't have a roster with me right now, but I, we have a, a closer, uh, well, he was a closer last night, and you know, he finished the game out, he got the save. Um, That's a pitcher? Yeah, pitcher, yeah. yeah. And uh, he's from a tiny island in, uh, the Pacific, uh, called Fiji. And he goes to the University of uh, Massachusetts Dartmouth, which is down on the coast, uh, uh, just north of Cape Cod in that area. And uh, he, uh, yeah, he got the, he got the, he met, he got, I know he got the save. Um, not sure, no, he never got, he never got behind. There was base runners on base. Uh, but he didn't didn't get behind. In other words, uh, so he got to save. Save is when you have a lead, you enter come come in as a lead or a tie or something like that. Different categories of scoring, and uh, the save is you don't let any runs come basically come in. And you know, so that was that we had the lead like from first inning. They got four runs in the first inning last night, wow. and some of them were on a couple of key errors, but that's, you know, the weather being what it is, you know, you yeah. come up against that. And who were they playing? Um, playing um, Brockman. Okay. And that's a team that's been in this. This league's been, the Futures League is probably, you know, it's five or six years old. I'm not sure because we've had, we've been closed because of COVID um, and also, some of these teams were in other leagues and then came in like Brockton used to be in a league called the Can-Am League, which was, or is. And, and these are like not solid right now because of the changes that have been going on in the, in the industry with franchises and stuff like that. Another um, problem with this is there's a league called the F Frontier League, which has some franchises that were in uh, are in Canada, and uh, the border's been closed or was closed yeah. for quite a few years. Yeah. So this has affected the game. The border's never been closed as long as it was closed. Yeah. And I'm figuring that it's, yeah, that goes back to the get-go. So let me and, ask you a couple questions. Sure. I understand that there have been some changes in the rules yep. of baseball. Yep. To make the games go faster? Or what? And then See, are those played out in this collegiate well, league? Yeah, that's that's two two parts. There's the pros are majors, major leagues, and affiliated teams. The leagues at the at the major league level, the teams are are the same basically, but the rules are different. The size of base is different. For example, they're trying to get away from 
pick up and move the throwovers or this kind of thing. And you would, and uh, then and to make it go quicker. And they've been pretty successful at that. But the the big thing a lot of people said they haven't really noticed the changes that much. And as we go along, that that's the thing you're expecting a change. And gee, how's that look? Or like last night was a lot of you know I had a, quite a few as you know that I couldn't. They didn't register, we'll put it that way. And so they were subtle changes? Yeah, subtle. Okay. Yeah, like, uh, for instance, with throwovers. And what's that? Uh, when you throw over to first base, man, on first base, you try to nail them. The base is bigger now. So okay. the runner, it say favors the runner. More of a chance. Yeah. And so, uh, so. There's more of a game. Yeah. 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 Well, it's quicker, <laughs> too. It goes along. He either's yeah. out or he's you know. Yeah. And th you, you have to. Um, like myself, you have to get the feeling, you have to get into the role. It doesn't, I was kind of surprised it didn't take, it doesn't, we've only had the one game really and there right. weren't that many circumstances, but in a couple of weeks we'll know more. Yeah. <laughs> so how many games are in this season? This is uh, 35 home, 35 away. So wow, that's 70. a lot. It is. They get, in, in this league, in the collegiate league, they have a set day off, which is Mondays generally. In you get an organized ball, what they call organized ball, or affiliated, you know. Okay. As opposed to disorganized ball, but okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they don't have Mondays off. They yeah, well, they have, well, they have three, three days off. Let me think. No, three days off a month. They changed that a while ago, and they may have changed it again. Um, in, in affiliated, you'd have three days off in the uh, months, I think it is, and and at each level it's a little different because it's more advanced. You're getting ready for the bigs, you know, and that means playing every day or whatever. You know? Yeah. And, and do the kids, um, well, the young men, do they stay with? I, I remember people yeah. living with families. Yeah, that's is that still basically true? that's a big program. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one, and the one that we have here gets accolades they uh, from what I understand uh, you know parents and kids you get to know the parents too. yeah That's another thing. yeah and uh, you you um, you, you got to realize what's going on I mean you gotta you, you got to understand things and, and you get you let people things you know and uh, yeah it's fun how does this team stack up I mean is this a promising well, team um, for this year or compared to other uh, years? They've been in uh, the league since, uh, where are we? We're 2003, so 2002, okay. 2001 we missed. 2021, yeah. Yep. And then uh, 2019 was. 19 would be the year. Um, so it's hard to compare. Well, we've right? won the championship the last two years, the league championship, mm -hmm. uh, the okay. first year. And we lost, <laughs> that's a long story, but we lost last year um, for the championship and the final walk-off. Uh, oh, you know, so, yeah. a hard <laughs> loss. Oh, yeah. And it was, uh, it was a good game. It was Nashua, which is where my son lives. So, you know, family. <laughs> yeah, you have mixed feelings. <laughs> yeah, and you got two grandsons that are sitting there, like eight and ten. <laughs> that was fun, but um, the uh, uh, Lake Monster. Well, the attendance is one of the things that really um, and has always been super high here, right? Very, I mean, people really patronize uh, the game. Yeah, they. Okay, last year Vermont was number one at two years in the two years that we've actually played. Mm -hmm. um, I had last year's numbers at 2022, uh, yeah. Um, we drew 70,635 and 35 wow. home games. We haven't had a rain out in two years. So that's about 2,000 people a game. Yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, 2,075. Now, n number two teams, New Britain, at 51,000, mm -hmm. and they average 1,700, uh, and Worcester, which there's a couple things that I say. Well, Worcester's pretty big, yeah, but they got a Triple A club for the Red Sox, right? Across the street or whatever, and uh, so less people would pick yeah, go to well, those you would games. figure their their number is at forty eight thousand, 
which is 1,600 a game, which they, but they only had 30 uh, home games because they had rainouts. Mm. We don't know what a rainout is here. Right, we just keep playing. <laughs> it's right. Play on. It's right. Well, it can. I love it that. It doesn't pull up anywhere. Exactly. They got a new infield. It's glorious, you know. Great. Good drainage. And the damn thing's been there since the year night. 2000, no, 1906. Yeah. <laughs> we graduated from there. Yeah. That's where our graduation was. Yeah. That's right. So we're, so we've got big fans here. Yeah. People are very strong. The uh, Nashua draw is pretty good. They draw 43,000, 1,400, and then you get Norwich, uh, which I thought could do better. But, but then again, they've only played 32 games because it's right. you know, rainy season all the time. The one, Pittsfield, doesn't do. They were the last. They they only drew twenty five thousand eight hundred. Uh, the the park in Pittsfield. My father played on that in there, and it was. Uh, whenever we come up to the farm, uh, Christ, we used to have, we lived in New Jersey as a little kid, and we always used to have to go to back to Pittsfield to Wakona Park. Well, Wakona Park is still there, uh -huh. and this year. Uh, well, my sister passed away, and the kids, cousins or nieces and whatever, um, they all wanted to go to Wakona. And I said, well, okay, I'll see what we can do. And we drive up, and the guy w was here. Well, I can't really do anything. But anyway, seeing this, you know. So I said, look, they're not going to step on anything. They're going to be <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we did. We, he gave us a tour of the place. And, oh, neat. Uh, the thing is, they still know who he is. Wow. And, wow. You know, and he was. Your dad. Yeah, 1926 is when he, 1927, something like that. That's when he left and went to Brooklyn. His brother, oh, older brother died, who he's really tight with. And uh, I, I, my guess, and we had this thing from my sister. She takes all kinds of notes, and she's a, she's a, she's a nurse, you know. And so, uh, Took all kinds of notes, and uh, we I kind of put two and two together. There was a place called Caverly Sanatorium down in Pittsford. It's the State Police Barracks now. I mean, the State Police uh, Academy, basically. And uh, that's what they use it for now. But back then, it was um, Caverly Preventorium. It's where polio was discovered. Mm. Wow. And they figured... Oh. Uh, there's a guy named Dr. Cavalier you know, that ran the place wow. and specialized in polio. So the family history reads something like sickly and this and that, um, but you couldn't get any pinned down thing, you know, so I don't know. That's why he came back Maybe to Maybe your Brooklyn. uncle had polio. That could well be. And then your yeah. dad moved when he died. Oh, he did, yeah. But they still remember him. Oh, yeah. In Pittsfield. In Pittsfield. Field. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and he, said, and he, he, he was, a, a, I didn't realize, oh, the other thing about this part is how I found out about this was um, drinking beer with Ray, uh, Ray Collins Jr. Ray Collins was UVM guy, uh, went to play for the Red Sox with um, Larry Gardner, third baseman, and uh, they were the last to win the World Series before the current set of Red Sox did a couple of years ago. And, you know, they had the lousy years all the way through and then whatever. Anyway, uh, he uh, lived to be 101, I believe. He comes from Middlebury. <coughs> Excuse me. And Carl Lindholm's done quite a bit of work on research on uh, his family. Anyway, um, the, uh, uh, you he said, him. I remember... Um, I remember a guy named Don McDonald who ran track for St. Joe's in uh, Pittsfield. And, and St. Joe's and St. Mike's, they used to have a field day type of thing, you know. And they put they had baseball games as well as the track. The track ran around. It was about a mile long. I don't know how you'd go up to Centennial Field and figure a circle by track back then. And uh, anyway, uh, he we... Uh, he said, yeah, I remember. He was pretty good. He was a first baseman, too. And he always put his gloves down with his shirt 
or whatever, run track, and then come back and put the stuff on, play first base or something like that. And the old man used to have these uh, every so often. He <laughs> he didn't want to pressure us. That's the thing. He didn't want. So he just decided and have my grandmother handle things. All right, and that's what my grandmother. We took trips when I was a little shrimpy kid, like to Quebec City to, to see the baseball field there. She said, "This is the most best field you ever saw in your life." Said, She's right, you know. <laughs> but you know, it's like God bless her. It was uh, interesting. So yeah. Um, we have a history of drawing really good. Uh, double A, we were like second or third in the league, if you go back and look at the research um, in the Eastern League. Um, same thing with the Penn League. And we had some, we were up against some big ones, you know, Staten Island and Brooklyn, and you get this little dinky place up here, and then, well, they're always good. The do fans. It. Yeah, it is. It's All it. right, well, listen, we're going to be really looking forward to the rest of the season, so sure. we're going to check back in. Yep. But we also have some more memories on Memories with Mac that we're going to be diving into. That'd be fun. So I hope you'll come back. Oh, I'll be back. Because you're be Mac. Back. <laughs> you have the you're memories. Back. So I want to thank you so much, Mac McDonald, for being with us today. Thank you, Lauren Glenn, for everything that you've done over the years. And just opening up things for a, a person like myself that really has a lot of things to think about. You have a oh, lot to say. Thing, yes. Uh, One final P.S. Real, real weird, not weird, but unusual. I served in the United States Army between 1963, summer of 63, and summer or winter of 66. I got extended in a weird amount of time. And uh, I was a reconnaissance scout in Berlin. And um, my grandson goes to Bard College, and they have an exchange program in Berlin. Neat. Now, my grandson's been over there, and he wants me, he wants some of my old maps and stuff. <laughs> and I got, I got a lot of stuff, you know. And it's, I don't know how that happened. I just, you know, that's what happens. I don't know how this happened. I just told the guy, yeah, okay, I'll help you out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't life like that? It's just a lot of certainty. Well, you got to take the chances. You got to say, yep. Yep, that's right. <laughs> well, thanks for saying yep for the show, and thank you so much for watching. Yeah. Stay tuned here for more memories with Mac. Thank on you. Town Meeting TV. Thanks a lot.